the door today, huh? You gonna get some work done? Hey, I'm Nick Paganella. My pal here. We work together on uh, Veterans Corner. Uh, he's a sergeant to uh, know it all. And uh, he does, he knows it all. I like working with him because uh, he doesn't give me any back talk. And uh, we uh, videotaped and produced uh, this video that you're about to see. We think it's uh, entertaining, historical, and even educational. And uh, we hope that you enjoy it. We really enjoyed doing it. Didn't we, Sergeant Think? Yes, sir. Good. President of the Hockamock Area YMCA, and on behalf of the YMCA, I'd like to welcome you all to our Vernon family branch in Franklin. And I'm looking at this uh, great crowd this morning, and I'm looking to see to my right the guard holding the American flag, and how fitting it is to be having this ceremony today on Flag Day, as we honor a young man from Franklin who was a member of this YMCA and who gave the ultimate sacrifice to our nation. So to begin this morning's program, it's my honor to introduce the color guard from the United States Marine Corps, and I'd ask you all to please stand for the presentation of colors and the playing of our national anthem. It's now my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the board of the Hockamock Area YMCA, Jeff Duffesey. Good morning. On behalf of our board and the entire team of the Hockamock Y, we'd like to welcome the family and friends of Lance Corporal Shane 
Camino. We have gathered here to honor a Franklin native and son who, ha who as a young man put his bravery, courage, and patriotism into becoming a proud member of the United States Marine Corps. He ultimately lost his life in 2005 at the age of 19, serving our country in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Today, on our nation's flag day, we come together to honor his life with this special memorial. Ed. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and I'd like to invite to the, uh, to the podium a longtime friend of our YMCA's, a friend of mine, a uh, member of our board of directors of the Hockamock Area YMCA, Steve Clapp. Steve introduced us and connected us to the Cavino family, and that's why we're here today. So Steve, if you'd please come forward. Good morning. In addition to being on the board of the Y, I'm a trustee of the Mount Hope Cemetery in North Attleboro, where Shane's buried. And last fall, Jody, Shane's mom, wrote us at the cemetery about Jesse Green's monument to Shane. And she wanted to put it into the Mount Hope Cemetery. The Mount Hope Cemetery is bound by rules and regulations, which make that a problem because we'd have to amend those rules and regulations. And in talking to Jody and finding out more about Shane and finding out that he was a Franklin Y kid, I knew that this was the place where the monument should be. I talked to Ed Hurley and I told him about Shane and Jody. And Ed embraced the idea of a monument here, and so did the staff of the Y and the board. And <clears throat> I'm so happy that things are coming together and we can have the monument here. Now, the YMCA has facilities and programs for families, and one of our core values is that we want to teach kids that character counts more than anything else. And we have programs for kids here, and we teach kids the core values of good character. And I know that Shane, in his years at the Y, must have picked up some of those values from his family and from the Y. Because I know he was a young man of great character. And it's very appropriate that Shane's memorial will be here. You'll hear about, you'll see it where the flag is going to be raised every morning by the kids at camp. That's where the memorial will be, and at the ceremony at the end of camp. So the kids, the Y kids of today and tomorrow, are going to have Shane's memorial to think about. To think about a Y kid, just like them, that grew up to be a brave soldier and to serve his country and to give his life to keep us free. But that memorial, for the kids, is important, but for the adults, it's even more important because for the members of the, the board of directors, the staff, the parents of the Y kids, they're all going to see that memorial and they're going to know that there's some, something more than just developing strong character in kids and sending them out into the world. We have a responsibility to give them an environment that is worthy of their high character. We have an, a responsibility to conduct our world in such a way that there aren't wars where kids of great character uh, will be called to give, a, to give the final sacrifice. And it's the ability to have kids with strong character to go out in the world and achieve their final potential. I think this is a great place for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, 
Cheryl Lucier Poppy is the Deputy Secretary for the Department of Veterans Services for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I'd like to invite Cheryl to please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Good morning. Today I am here on behalf of Secretary Nee and the Department of Veterans Services to award the Massachusetts Medal of Liberty to the family of Lance Corporal Shane Cabino, a Marine, a son, a brother, a friend, and an athlete. We honor him and his service here today in the presentation of this Medal of Liberty. Just to tell you a little bit about the medal for anyone who has never you know, known about it or seen it before, it's awarded in the name of the Governor of the Commonwealth in honor of servicemen and women who are killed in action. And it's a heart-shaped medal and it, it symbolic of the Purple Heart, and its ribbon has a black border, which represents the mourning of our loss. In the center of the medal bears the gold star, representing the gold star mothers. And the top center of the medal is a coat of arms of the Commonwealth, and the reverse top depicts the branch of service of the service member. And it consists of the words in honored memory above the name, engraving surface, and surface and sacrifice below. I would like to ask uh, Master Sergeant Retired Helon Wiley, who's the Survivor Outreach Services Coordinator for Massachusetts, to come up. And if I could ask Mrs. Jody Cabino Cipriani to please come forward to receive them. To all who shall see these prisons, greetings. This is to certify that the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, authorized by Chapter 132 of the Acts of 2009, has presented the Medal of Liberty for Lance Corporal Shane M. Cabino, United States Marine Corps. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 33, Section 67A, there shall be a Medal of Liberty, which shall be awarded to the next of kin of the servicemen and women from the Commonwealth killed in action or died as a result of wounds received in action. Signed, Deval L. Patrick, Governor, L. Scott Rice, Major General, Massachusetts National Guard, the Adjutant General. It is now a great honor to introduce Colonel Russell E. Smith from the United States Marine Corps. Colonel Smith is the commander of the 25th Marine Regiment. Colonel Smith. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Cipriano family, distinguished visitors. It is my distinct privilege to be the personal representative of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General James F. Amos, uh, here today. Um, General Amos is a, uh, I, I know General Amos very well, I served with him uh, many times, and uh, he was the uh, uh, MEF commander uh, at the time of uh, uh, Shane's passing, and uh, I know he has uh, met the Cipriano family, specifically Jody, uh, uh, a, a couple of times, and I, I do know that he, uh, actually sent you an email the other day and expressing his regrets for not being here. Uh, but he has asked me and I personally talked to me on, uh, uh, on this uh, the, to go ahead and say a few words for him and uh, represent uh, the Marine Corps at this uh, solemn occasion. The President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, once said of the Marine Corps or the Marines that uh, some people go around their entire lives wondering if they've made a difference. But Marines do not have that problem. And Shane was a Marine. So as President Reagan said, Shane does not have the problem, 
He has made a difference. And I know this for several reasons. First of all, I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Shane's mother, and she shared with me some of the personal stories of Shane when he was a young man. And one of the things she said in an email she sent to me this week was, we love the fact that you are an intricate part of our family, woven into every fabric of our lives in our own special design that radiates you everywhere in our lives. You are irreplaceable, irreversible, and so deeply embedded in our hearts and souls that you are continually with us and always loved and missed each and every second that time holds. Also, she said, that Shane joined the Marine Corps because of the, maybe the stubbornness in his life, um, maybe the solitude in his life, and uh, when he joined the Marine Corps, um, his mother probably questioned that a little bit, I suspect. And uh, Shane said back to his mom, Mom, I'm sorry, but I gave my word, and this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stick by it. And it was at that time, his mother says, she knew Shane had made the jump from being the baby of the family to being a man. Shane's friends and, and uh, uh, those Marines which he was in Iraq with, used to uh, talk about Shane was fearless, courageous, and courage. And they would always follow Shane wherever he went because they knew they would be safe and protected because of what he did. And so he's made a difference. He's made a difference in every life he's touched. He's made a difference because he's a Marine. And it is fitting here today at the Franklin YMCA where he was a member that he will continue to make a difference. He'll continue to make a difference in the young lives of those YMCA campers that come to the flag in the morning and say the Pledge of Allegiance and see the memorial and understand what courage and sacrifice and the cost of true patriotism of our young men and women in war. And so it was my pleasure to be here today to represent the Commandant of the Marine Corps and the United States Marine Corps to honor Shane's memory. Semper Fidelis. And may we all continue to live in Shane's memory with the courage, honor, and commitment that he showed our country. Thank you. I have you here representing the Marines, and uh, thank you for that very moving tribute to Shane. Lisa Nelson is the uh, senior district representative for Representative U.S. Congressman Joe Kennedy. Lisa has been a longtime friend of our YMCA, as is Congressman Kennedy, and uh, I'd like to ask Lisa to come forward uh, to make some remarks. Good morning. It's, it's a real privilege to be here today representing Congressman Kennedy, who would really prefer to be here himself but could not be here this morning. But he does extend his special thanks, especially to the Hockamock YMCA, for providing such a fitting tribute to a truly dedicated soldier who made the ultimate sacrifice for this country. And also a thanks to Jesse Green, who saw a mother's pain and used his incredible talent to immortalize her son. You know, there really couldn't be a more appropriate day for this dedication ceremony than today, the day that we celebrate the flag of the United States of America as a symbol of freedom from tyranny. The colors of the flag were chosen for a reason. They are symbolic of what America stands for, 
but they are also truly representative of all that Shane stood for. The color red was chosen because it represents hardiness and valor. The color white represents purity and innocence. And the color blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. It is with great honor that Congressman Kennedy has asked for a flag to be flown over the United States Capitol today in honor and in memory of Shane Cabino. This flag and a dedication certificate will be sent to Mrs. Cabino as a reminder that although Shane is no longer here physically, he will never be forgotten. Thank you very much, Lisa, and please express our appreciation to Congressman Kennedy as well. Uh, we're very fortunate to have so many folks in the room here today, uh, local officials, uh, state officials, Lisa representing Congressman Kennedy on the federal level. And uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce somebody who is also a resident of Franklin and uh, our, our representative in the uh, State House in Boston from Franklin, from the 10th uh, District, uh, Jeff Roy. Uh, Jeff? Thank you, Ed. I'm indeed honored to be here this morning. Today is a day of remembrance and reflection for Shane Cabino, who answered the call of duty and served in harm's way for the sake of this country. We honor the actions of this brave American for whom this country and his family have lost. The monument we're about to unveil will pay silent tribute to a young man who went to a distant war in Iraq and never returned. He didn't go to fight the Iraqis. He went to fight for America, to defend American ideals and preserve American freedoms. He fought to preserve communities like this one, and he fought to save the lives of his friends. The memorial will also serve as a place where Y kids will start their day with the Pledge of Allegiance to promote both civic awareness and patriotism. The pledge represents an opportunity to reflect on the fact that although we are a diverse people, we share a national identity as citizens who are committed to the promise of liberty and justice for all. During my Memorial Day remarks, I mentioned that when I approach and enter the State House each day, I think of those who made the sacrifice so that we all could be free. And I want to reiterate that to Shane's mom and his family today. It is monuments like this one to Shane that instill in me the gravity and importance of the work to be done. I truly cherish this opportunity to serve, and it is my sincere hope that it provides some measure of gratitude to those like you who fought or lost loved ones so that I and my colleagues could secure their vision of liberty. The monument also serves as a reminder that in each generation, brave men and women will always step forward to take the oath of allegiance as members of America's armed forces, willing to fight and, if necessary, die for the sake of freedom. We must pledge to never forget our veterans, not just today, but every day. Take pause frequently to thank them for their service. I thank Shane's mom and his family for providing a memorial to help us remember. It is fitting that your presence here today speaks to what President John F. Kennedy once said. A nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. Thank you for being here to honor our patriot, Shane Cabino. May God bless the Cabino family, and may God bless you for being here today. And with that, I'm pleased to offer two citations from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. And I'd ask uh, Jody and uh, Jesse if you'd please join me. Jody, I have here a uh, citation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives. I'm sorry, sir. I never met Jesse. Absolutely. It's a great union. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives 
office its sincerest congratulations to Jody Cabino Cipriano in recognition of your generous donation to the community, which honors the sacrifice of our fallen hero, Shane Cabino, and his family. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 14th day of June 2013 at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo, and myself as your state representative. Thank you, sir. And I'm Jesse. I'm glad you had a chance to meet Jody finally today. And we have a, a citation also to you from the House of Representatives, uh, and it's congratulations to the machine, Jesse Green, in recognition of your creation of the Battlefield Cross, honoring Lance Corporal Shane Cabino and your other charitable endeavors. Also signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, and myself as your state representative, as I understand you're from Medway. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. As we start to wind down the indoor portion of our ceremony today, uh, this has been a pretty, this is a pretty emotional day. And I can tell you it's a very special day for our YMCA to be able to do this. I did not have um, the honor of knowing Shane. Um, I feel like I know him a lot better now than I did before the ceremony started. Um, thank you, Colonel, for your remarks. And we all know what young people like Shane give to our country, what they mean to our communities, and what the United States Marine Corps does every single day. And I'm going to go a little bit off uh, what we planned this morning, but I just feel it's appropriate at this time. Uh, again, this monument will be at our YMCA for future generations. So Shane will be recognized and honored and remembered for future generations. And a couple years ago, we did the same thing in North Attleboro for a young man who I did have the privilege to know growing up, another United States Marine who gave his life for our country. And we're very honored that we have the Kyle Van De Giesen Outdoor Education Center in North Attleboro where young people have a chance to experience and be impacted by our YMCA and also the memory of Kyle and what an amazing young man he was and he was. And I just wanted, wanted to say that because it's important to me and I also look in the back of the room, and Kyle's dad is here. So, Cal, thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you for what you've done. It is now my pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce. We have several members, many members of the Gavino family with us today. And it's a pleasure and an honor to now be able to introduce Shane's mom representing the family, Jody Cabino Cipriano. Jody. Um, I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't really expect this. And thank you all for being here. I want to thank everybody for coming today. You, em you emulate the example of our young men and women who serve because you came and it was probably raining. They don't get to say it's raining, let's do it another day. Patriot God writers who represent all state and town officials, co-workers, supporters of our fallen, Marine Corps League, Marine Honor Guard, Ed Hurley, Steve Clapp, Steve Martin, YMCA staff, this list is long. Colonel Smith, longtime friends and, my, and family, my family, my children, I ask you all for a few minutes of your time because this story is so near and dear to my heart and I am compelled to share every precious detail. When we lost Shane in Iraq, my husband, Tony, he raised him since he was one and he told me to get the bridge on, four, one, uh, on 140, named after his boy. Jim Valley took care of 
it through Governor Romney's office. And before long, we had a $22 million bridge with Shea's name on it. Holly LaRusso and I put the original flags up. There was a flag for every branch of the service. I had a lot of Marines tell me, ma'am, that's a Marine bridge. And I told them, I know, but everybody who serves deserves to be honored. Shortly thereafter, someone began maintaining the bridge and bless my heart above and beyond. That man was later found out to be Tom Hewitt. After we found out who he was, Tony and I used to hang the flags with him in the spring and take them down in the winter. We lost Tony four years ago this June 25th. October 6, 2012 was seven years since we had lost Shane. Tom knew I was thinking about hanging all Marine flags for him this year to give him his Marine bridge. He called to check, I offered to help, and one day all the flags were hung. When I saw the bridge, it was awe-inspiring. I realized that it was really seven years. Since losing Shane, time holds no value. I knew I needed to put something at the cemetery besides his plaque. He deserved it, and his stone is just too final. I can't process it in my head or my heart. So I sought to find something so different so unique, so my boy, to put it there for now. I went searching and found a carved eagle in Bellingham in front of a house. I stopped and asked the guys if they knew who made it. One of them went in his garage and brought out a sign. He let me copy the info. And this is where the greatest story of kindness unfolds. This guy's name was Jesse, so I wrote to him. I told him that I lost my 19-year-old son in Iraq and I was wondering if he'd make me a battlefield cross. He said it was a project that he'd be honored to take on, but he had some questions. He'd never done anything like this before and he didn't want me to be disappointed. He was sure he could do it, but he needed to know what I was really looking for. He also wanted to know how soon I needed it because he was kind of busy. I told him I was sure he wouldn't disappoint me. I'd seen his work. After all, I did see his ego. I also told him not to worry. Whenever he could make it, fall, spring, didn't matter. Just let me know how much. Then he asked me to tell him about my son. Google Shane's name and one wonders how Franklin fits in. I wanted Jesse to know the truth about my son with as little dysfunction as possible. I was on rough draft number 12, about two weeks later when I heard from Jesse next. He said he went out the 4th of July to mow the lawn and ended up carving Shane's battlefield cross. He said it seemed more meaningful than mowing the lawn and that it was a project close to his heart and it was his gift. He would let me know when it was done and he also apologized for if asking me about Shane was too much for me. I told him he had honored my son, he had honored his family, and he had every right to know who my boy was and I sent him rough draft number 12. He wrote back and said, wow. He would let me know when the battlefield cross was done. During the, that time, I was dealing with the board at Mount Hope to see if I could place the battlefield cross there. I got another email from Jesse, and it reads as follows. Hey, Jody, so Shane's sculpture is done. I even was able to get it into a scene we shot for my show. It was really cool. So it will be shown worldwide on National Geographic. You know, I don't even know that you necessarily knew that I was shooting a show for Nat Geo. Well, if you didn't know, it's true. The National Geographic Channel actually gave me my own reality show that follows me on chainsaw sculpting, sculpting projects. And we had already shot season one back in March and April, but we've been shooting pickup scenes here and there all summer. So long story short, I showed my producers Shane's Battlefield Cross, and we were able to at least get it on camera for a scene. I mean, it's definitely the coolest, proudest thing I've ever made. It's been getting some really touching reactions from everyone that's been through here. So I wrote back and said, wow. <laughs> I had no clue who Jesse was, that this man had months of work before him, and he had made my boy first. The honor and kindness that he brought to this family without a second thought radiates some of the very principles, ideals, and values that our young men and women fight for. 
At that moment, I had no words, only tears of gratitude. Due to regulations, I was unable to place the battlefield cross at the cemetery. Steve Clapp, a board member of Mount Hope and the Franklin YMCA, told me that he spoke with Ed Hurley, president of the Y, and they, that they would like to do a memorial at the, Shane for, at, the Shane, at the Y for Shane. And if I was willing, use Shane's battlefield cross as its centerpiece. Seeing as our entire family had ties to the Y, Tony and I had worked for the contractor who worked on the very first Y before any of this. Billy, Shane, and Zach all went to Y daycare. Brandy and Justin attended the after school program in summer camp. The kids grew up on Forge Hill and it was Shane's hometown, I said yes. I thought, what better place to display such an act of love for my son, such an act of patriotism for one's country and to those who serve, an example to children of giving from one's heart. A place where values like character, integrity, kindness, and truth are taught by example, a place that will always hold change truth. Jesse Green, I will forever be grateful to you for the kindness and honor that you have extended to my Shane and our family. May the symbol of Shane's battlefield cross inspire generations of young children. And from the words of General Amos, always remind us daily of the courage and sacrifice of our young men and women in the real currency of war. With my whole heart, on behalf of my son and our entire family, thank you. Thank you very much, Jody. And thank you, Jesse. We'll have a chance to hear from Jesse in a couple moments outside um, as we complete the indoor portion of the ceremony, um, I'd like to ask a colleague of mine to come forward. Uh, Scott Martin is the branch director here at the Vernon Family Branch in Franklin. And just so folks know, um, Scott did yeoman's work in putting this program together and all the elements of it. So Scott, thank you very much. So does to, to Scott and all my colleagues here at the uh, at the YMCA in Franklin, I say thank you for making today so special. And uh, Scott, if you'd please uh, join us.